2021. This might end up being the year for helis in DCS. We got some very exciting choppers coming our way. If we are extremely lucky, we will be able to see some of these this year. But I am a patient man, I can wait if that means we will be getting a decent product on launch, even if it's called Early Access. I am expecting JF-17 release standards here. Let's go through the list now of the helicopters that have been confirmed being developed for DCS. Let's start with the Bow 105, also known as the Red Ball Heli for better or worse. The Bow 105 is a light, twin-engine, multi-purpose helicopter developed by Volko of Otterburn, West Germany. I hope I'm kinda saying that right. This bird was the first light twin-engine helicopter in the world and the first rotocraft that could perform aerobatic maneuvers such as the inverted loop. It also sports a revolutionary hingeless rotor system, pioneering innovation in helicopters when it was introduced in 1970. Without a doubt, this is a very, very special helicopter. Let's talk about its general characteristics now. A crew of one or two pilots, capacity for three or four passengers, almost 12 meters in length, 3 meters tall, an empty weight of 1.2 tons, with a max takeoff weight of 2.5 tons, 570 liters fuel capacity, 130 knots max speed, cruising at 110 knots, with a never exceed speed of 150 knots, a range of about 660 kilometers, with a ferry range of 1100 kilometers with external fuel tanks. Endurance of about 3 hours and 30 minutes on standard fuel and max payload, a service ceiling of 17,000 feet with a rate of climb of 1,575 feet per minute. So yeah, brilliant little rotorcraft we are going to enjoy seeing doing quite pathetic inverted loops by unskilled pilots in the acrobatic server. I will be one of those most definitely. Anyway, that's all fun and good, but what about the armament? Well, just like with the currently available Gazelle, you can expect state-of-the-art anti-tank weapons. The Bow 105 is able to carry up to 6 Aero Missile HOT or 8 BGM-71 TOW. These are two launched, optically tracked anti-tank missiles, with a range of 4.2 km and 3.8 km respectively. So we end up with a very maneuverable light rotorcraft, perfect for reconnaissance operations or, if desired, tank killing operations. Now let's talk a little bit about its development. I was able to track its development to at least uh, 2013. It probably started even earlier than that. Its project creator is a gentleman that goes by the handle of D Fragger in the DCS forums. He is also lead designer of True Grit, the team behind the upcoming Eurofighter Typhoon. The module, the BO-105 of course, was being created under the studio name of Miltek 5 as far as I can tell, previously known as Polydynamics? I'm really not sure, things just keep getting more confusing. At this point in time, it seems that it's being developed by Rasbam and will be released under the Rasbam name. It seems Miltek 5 aka Polydynamics aka the Fragger, required some help to continue development of the Bo 105. He knocked the doors on Rasbam and the heat blurs, and Rasbam was the one who answered the call, for better or worse. Rasbam does have a pretty terrible release track record. I hope the upcoming models, of course the Bo 105 and also the F-15 Eagle, do not follow the Rasbam tradition of releasing unplayable modules into the early access. Anyway, so that is what I've got for the Bow 105. I'm really excited to hear more from it in the future and if we get a decent release, adding it to my library. Remember, no pre-orders. Let's move on into another aircraft we are eagerly waiting for. The Mil Mi-24, aka the Hind. This one is quite different beast from the Bow 105. This is a large helicopter gunship, a attack helicopter and a low capacity troop transport. This is a very unique machine. As a combination of armored gunship and troop transport, the Mi-24 has no direct NATO counterpart. The Hue is one heli that can be argued to be a gunship and also ferry troops, but make no mistake, it was not able to do both at the same time. A Huey gunship required to strip the entire passenger area to, as to accommodate the extra fuel and ammunition, while the Mi-24 can be a fully capable gunship while at the same time being able to transport troops. Let's talk a little bit about the general characteristics. Requires a crew of two, a pilot and a weapon system officer. You could also add an optional technician for a crew of three. It has a capacity to carry eight troops, four stretchers and 2.4 tons of cargo on an external sling. It is almost 18 meters long, 
fuselage only, 20 if you include the rotors, and it has a height of 7.5 meters, an empty weight of 8.5 tons, and a max takeoff weight of 12 tons. Two turbo shaft engines producing 2200 shaft horsepower each, a maximum speed of 180 knots, a range of about 450 kilometers, and a service ceiling of 16,000 feet. We are getting the Papa variant. This is the gunship version. It replaces the 12.7 machine gun with a fixed side mounted 30mm GSH 32K twin barrel autocannon. This autocannon should be carrying around 260 rounds ready to fire. It also has four hard points where you can expect to be able to mount rockets, bombs, gun pods, and or fuel tanks. And we also get two wingtips pylons for anti-tank guided missiles. Now, regarding its development, it is being developed by Eagle Dynamics, the creators of DCS World, and some of the best modules out there such as the A-10C, the Black Shark, and the FA-18C. So we can rest assured the MI-24 will eventually be a pretty amazing module, but if it follows the same path that the F-16 did, we're going to have a rocky start. Hope that is not the case. Wasting no time, let's go ahead and talk about another rotorcraft coming our way. The Bell OH-58D Kiowa Warrior, aka KW. This heli is primarily operated in an armed reconnaissance role in support of ground troops. This Delta model uh, was the result of the Army Helicopter Improvement Program. An upgraded transmission and engine gave the aircraft the power it needed for nav to the earth flight profiles and a four-bladed main rotor made it much quieter than the two-bladed Charlie. The Delta introduced the distinctive mast-mounted sights above the rudder system, and a mixed glass cockpit with traditional instruments identified as standby for emergency use. So the Kiowa Warrior is the armed version of the OH-58 Delta Kiowa. The main difference that distinguishes the Kiowa Warrior from the original AHIP aircraft is the universal weapons pylon found mounted on both sides of the aircraft. These pylons are capable of carrying a combination of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, air-to-air -air stingers, 7-shot 2.75 inches Hydra 70 rocket pods, and a M296 50 cal machine gun. The standard performance for aerial gunnery from a OH-58D is to achieve at least one hit out of 70 shots fired at a wheeled vehicle 800 to 1200 meters away. The KW upgrade also includes improvements in available power, navigation, communication and survivability, as well as modifications to improve the aircraft's deployability. Clearly this small helicopter packs quite a punch. And those Hellfire missiles give the KW a deadly operational range of 11 kilometers. If done correctly, this module should be extremely capable and fun. Let's touch on the general characteristics for a bit. Has a crew of two pilots, almost 13 meters in length and almost 4 meters in height, empty weight of 1.7 tons and a gross weight of 2.5 tons. Has a single 650 HP turboshaft power plant, maximum speed of 130 knots, cruise speed of 110, with an endurance of about 2 hours, a range of around 560 kilometers, service ceiling of 15,000 feet. Now let's talk about the developer, Polychop. They currently have only one DCS module under their belt, and it also happens to be a heli, a small one. It is the SA, 342 Gazelle. I do not own this module, sadly, so I can't really comment on how it is. I never got it as it seems the community has always been very divided regarding that module. Some people think it's fantastic, some people think it's neglected, some people think the flight dynamics are great, some people think it is unrealistically twitchy. I... I don't know. Whatever the case may be, what I do know is that they do have experience with a small, nimble rotorcraft for DCS and my expectations are high for the KW. I really want to try out that little bird, can't wait. But now it's time to talk about the last rotorcraft. And it is, of course, the most hyped, most anticipated, developed by Eagle Dynamics as well, so you can expect a great module out of it, but probably not on release date, probably. It is the Boeing AH-64D Apache. Surely needs no introduction. One of the most, if not the most, popular Western attack helicopter. But for those who do not know, the Apache is an American twin turboshaft attack helicopter with a tailwheel type landing gear arrangement and a tandem cockpit of a crew of two. 
Got all the cool things you would expect, nose mounted sensor suite for target acquisition and night vision system, armed with a 30mm M230 chain gun, 4 hard points in the stop wing pylons for more armament and stores, typically you can find here some AGM's 114 Hellfire missiles and the Hydra 70's rocket pods. Manufacturing of this thing began on 1975 by Hughes Helicopters, the helicopter division of Hughes Aircraft. Company started obviously by Howard Hughes. In case you do not know who this gentleman is, may I recommend watching the movie The Aviator? Quite a treat that movie is. Anywho, Hughes Helicopters was then bought by McDonnell Douglas in 84 and in 97 Boeing grabbed all of that, so this is a Boeing aircraft now. Gladly there is no MCAS in this aircraft, so we should be okay. This Delta variant is a longbow. It is equipped with a glass cockpit and quite advanced sensors, which is surprising in DCS, that's gonna be really cool. The most noticeable of the sensors is the AN APG 78 longbow millimeter wave fire control radar target acquisition system and the radar frequency interferometer housed in a dome located above the main rotor. The Radon's raised position enables target detection while the helicopter is behind obstacles, as an example terrains, trees, buildings. The AN APG-78 is capable of simultaneously tracking up to 128 targets and engaging up to 16 at once. It does have a radio modem integrated which allows sensors data to be shared with ground units and other Apaches, allowing these units to fire into the targets that have only been detected by a single helicopter. Needless to say, it is going to be a beast, well it is a beast and it will be a beast in DCS sometime. I wonder what limitations we will have if we want to fly this bird as a single man. Though the workload is really high, it is also really fun to fly an attack helicopter as a single person just like in the KA-50 Black Shark. Ok, let's discuss the general characteristics of the Apaches. Crew of two, of course, a length of almost 18 meters, almost 4 meters in height, an empty weight of 5.2 tons and a max takeoff weight of 10.4 tons. Two turboshaft engines producing 1,700 shaft horsepowers each, a max speed of 160 knots, a never exceed speed of 200 knots, range of about 260 nautical miles and a service ceiling of 20,000 feet. Now that is a pretty nice service ceiling for a helicopter. Ok, so regarding the developer, as we mentioned, it is by Eagle Dynamics. And of course, you can be sure that the final, final, final result will be a masterpiece, but it may be released in a very poor state and will require years before it starts feeling complete. I am crossing my fingers for that not to be the case. I don't mind early access, but with these things you can get a really fun early access or a ah I gotta wait a couple of years early access to jump back in. And that is it for the helicopters that are currently confirmed to be coming into DCS sometime in the future. If all goes well we can expect some of these to actually reach us the consumer market this year. What are your thoughts on these helicopters? Which one will you be getting? Maybe all of them? It definitely is a big investment. Do you have any worries or concerns regarding these modules? I personally am not sure for which one I am more excited about. Obviously the Apache is really cool, but everyone is going to be flying that so it loses a little bit of appeal to me. I wonder what experience the Hind will bring. It does sound really exciting to move cargo while at the same time being a gunship and it is weirdly pretty. But also the Bow 105 and the KW seem like extremely fun and nimble rotorcrafts must be a blast for VR. I don't know, really would appreciate some thoughts on this. Anyway, thank you very much for sticking around, hope you enjoyed this little video and hope to see these wingless birds in the air soon. Happy flying! Cross checkout!